Hello, people on the tube. If you're watching this and you saw the time of how long this video is, you probably were either one who watches anything I do, which is to say thank you for being crazy. And uh, also, you might be someone who's actually really interested in uh, a high-end speaker simulator slash attenuator, not, uh, not someone who you wants, you know, to make any compromise in that department because at the price point that the Ox is at, you need to be serious about this type of product. So, that being said, what you can expect in this video, an overview of the Ox by Universal Audio, what it is, ins and outs and all this. Then we're going to go into checking out sounds with a whole bunch of amps and a whole bunch of guitars because that's what we do here. We'll go in depth and we'll look at the software and everything that it can do. Then, uh, well, before we do that, actually, we're going to check out the um, attenuation and how well it attenuates. For that, I set up a biodynamic stereo mic in the room about five meters. That's feet also in. So it's, it's a whole bunch of feet, a whole bunch of feet away from um, this coffee cups, which you can't see. Uh, go to the room amp wall, Leslie. This uh, coffee cups cab. Um, and see how it attenuates, because it can do that. And um, make your cap in the room disappear or be a whole lot quieter. And it does that well. We do that, then we look at sounds, whole bunch of amps, whole bunch of guitars, and what it can do, how the software works. That'll take a while. And at the very end, we're going to answer some questions as to where does it stand compared to... Uh, the reigning kings and emperors of the um, speaker simulator world, which is to say the Two Notes Torpedo Live, which is a little bit cheaper, and the Two Notes Torpedo Studio, which is a little bit more expensive. Where are the differences? Is this thing just another box like it, or is it completely different, and can we really compare them? Well, obviously we can, because in the end, what, how does it sound and what does it do? We'll not compare the sounds. Because to do that, we'd have to actually compare the same speakers, which is, it, it is stupid. All three devices will result in great speaker sounds. They're all more than usable in any recording or live situation. Well, live, we'll talk about the aux there. But it's not about the sound. They're all great. It is about features and what target audience it is aimed at. Now, we're going to it. Right now, the aux front panel. Well, there it is. And there's light reflecting from somewhere. Don't ask me where. From some. Oh, there's light. You see, you see now the reflection is gone. So, you can see that you can't see a big user interface. I have to stop myself from saying like on the torpedo. We'll go into that at the very end. What you have here is a rig switch. And right now it's not plugged in, so nothing lights up. And that is very simple. In the software, you set five different, uh, six different, five, I can't read, six different rigs, which is great because you, you know you don't set up anything here. You put this on your amp, and you've got six different things. So you could have a 412 without any effects and very little room. You could have a little 110 champ kind of a thing, and then you could have a 212 for cleans, something for leads with delay and compression on it. So six different setups really are quite a lot. Usually on the torpedoes, I have one or two that I like. So six is fine. Now I like this big ass knob, um, which is dialing in the room. And it is not to say dialing in the reverb, because the reverb is separate. This is actually the room that the speaker is in. And that signal then gets, if you want to, pumped into a reverb. So it is not reverb, it is room, of which there's only one. But it can be dampened with the carpet if you want to. Now, this is, of course, the thing that makes this a little bit special. It is the speaker volume. Do you have it at zero, which means nothing gets channeled through to your speaker. If you have it at one, it is super whisper quiet and probably not loud enough. Up to almost full level from your uh, amp. I don't think you can go full level. I think the Universal Audio guy in one of the demos that I saw said this is already like minus 15, 20%. But it's pretty damn loud. Uh, line out is going to pump out of the uh, the level going out of the uh, balanced stereo output. And 
uh, that doesn't affect the digital out. Digital out is always there. Headphone out is for the headphone out. Well, duh. Uh, what you cannot see here is an input volume or a input sensitivity, which uh, I tried it. Apparently, it always just you know, does it automatically. So whether you have a 5 watt amp going into this or a 100 watt amp going into this, uh, you know, same same deal. Uh, it, it just does it automatically, which is nice because you can't overload the input, which on uh, the torpedo you can. And that is, uh, you know, sometimes a little bit tricky to set up in an output. It's, it's always a balancing thing. If you go out digital out of this, that's not an issue. Uh, if you go analog, set it up here. It has this, I don't know if this is fake wood or real wood. I really want to cut into it to see, but of course, you know, I don't want to cut it into it to see. Uh, it's nice, it's kind of a, like a living room atmosphere. Yes. So, and we go to the back. On the back, we have, wait, my cable is disappearing. Stay here, baby, stay here. Don't run away. Um, big ass power switch with this proprietary 12 uh, volt input, which of course is supplied. USB out and in or whatever that is. What those are for, I don't quite know. You can probably uh, put it on your computer if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, which you know works. But uh, that might be for uh, potential software upgrades or adding. I, I have no idea. And then we have a spdif out and optical. So both uh, uh, optical and coaxial. Foot switch, don't ask me what that's for. We have from amp in 150 watts. That's a good sized input, impedance switch and going through to your speaker. And we have line out and line out in stereo. Now is this thing stereo? Well, yes it is. The reverb, uh, the miking, everything can be done stereo, but it's not doing two uh, two different caps. So it, yes, the output is stereo, but the uh, that is more the effects and how the mics are placed. So yeah, it is stereo. Let's just say it is. <laughs> but it can't do two caps. Let's say this. It can't do two caps, but it is stereo. I love the fact that you can see here the uh, everything has been written upside down as well. So that when you're looking at it like this, or it's on top of your, your amp, and you're doing this, you can actually read what to plug into. That's very smart. Now, a uh, big, big thumbs up to Universal Audio for putting big ass feet on this, because this will actually fit onto any amp. If uh, you go to the amp, no, stay here, you stupid kid. Now on this GLB cap, there's a big leather handle about one of the biggest handles you can have on any amp and it fits onto this with room to spare. That is great. Not a lot of companies make their stuff high enough so that you can actually put it on this type of handle. So they definitely thought of a lot. Um, I'm going to plug this in and we're going to go into sounds. I'll turn on a whole bunch of amps and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I got some screen capture happening and we're gonna now check out uh, what the sound difference or the volume difference is in the room. Right now, it's not on at all. It's at zero. I also changed the angle on the aux box so that uh, you can see the app next to it. Also, what I want to say about how you hook it up with uh, the Wi-Fi is pretty brilliant. I thought Wi-Fi would only be for the iPad app, which sadly I can't show you, even though Sean Tubbs showed you because he got it like up front or something. And because Sean Tubbs is a sp Please watch Sean Tubbs' uh, review of this to see some amazing playing, get some amazing tones, and a different point of view on the whole thing. Sean Tubbs, that's his channel. Um, but he's showing the, the, the app. I don't have the app on my iPad, uh, so... I'm doing the PC, the, the, the Mac thing, but I thought you have to hook it up with USB. No, the way it works is you find the aux as a Wi-Fi network, hook up to it. And then I thought, well, but then I don't have Wi-Fi on my computer. That's stupid. No, 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 no. Then when you connect it, you tell the aux what the network is. After it hooked up to the internal network, you hook up to that network again, and then it can communicate. And it actually works brilliantly with a little bit of a, a delay, but that's fine. Not on the guitar, on when you do things. So 
Um, I'm going to roll over here and just show you speaker volume uh, in the room. So right now what you're hearing is what's coming out of the monitor speakers, which I should probably turn down. So now the aux is getting all the power. Nothing coming out. I go to one. You can absolutely totally hear me. There's the laugh mic, there's the room mic that you're hearing. That is so that your wife could possibly watch some kind of cooking show. Was that sexist? It probably was. Some kind of... Whatever your wife wants to watch show. Or whatever your boyfriend wants to watch show. Um, and you could play without them going nuts. And I have a small box 50 on that pumping out quite a bit of power. Now I'm on two. Ah! Go to Sean Tubbs for good play. I would still call that advanced bedroom level. If I'm, if I'm talking, it's 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 louder than that. But it's still not in any way piercing. If you want to talk over it, to like you know talk with your student or whatever, two is. But because it's a reactive load, it's pushing back to the amp the same way that a speaker would. Because apparently someone like the Universal Audio guy in the Anderton's video explained when the speaker moves back and forth, there is some, something about technology and voltage and whatever pushing back to the amp. So the amp reacts to how the speaker does things. That's, yeah, that's a thing. Um, so three is loud. <laughs> Now we're getting close to where the amp actually is. full-blown fun and off point is this works very beautifully out oh, there and um when i'm actually uh working with my when, when i'm recording it and i'm working with my speakers and i'm getting my, my speaker simulation and my monitor speakers are blaring at me i could actually mix that in there too and get a little bit from behind but the cool thing is I don't feel any phasing or anything. So whatever is coming out of my speakers in the computer and what is reaching me directly from the cab is in sync. It doesn't in any way get delayed. I, I don't know how they do that. So it's easy for me to fill up the room a bit from the back. So um, well, if you could see the software, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw in the software right now. Okay, here's the software. And um, you can actually see when I'm turning the room no uh, knob that on the software, the room knob rooms up and down. I think that's all you can do here. Line out. No, because I have it hooked up optically. I'm now on the uh, Morgan AC20. And we're going to go through some sounds here. So let me show you the software, what that looks like. Right now I have a... Voxy type cap. I like they really stay away from Marshall Vox, Fender, all that stuff. I, I think they, they do. So if I go click on... Ah, here, cap. Um, right now, input level is 100 watt. If I change that, the cap will behave differently. Which also has something to do with the speaker drive. Now the speaker drive is 
how distorted is the speaker itself and how much is it, you know, breaking up. Now, there is something that I learned because of this, which Sean Tubbs was talking about and the guys at Endance were talking about, which is cone cry, which is on very old speakers or back in the day, uh, you had speakers that really couldn't handle it. And on certain notes, there was kind of some resonance happening at high, really high volumes. And the speaker itself was creating these, these notes. And which notes it's doing that on, you can actually see that right here, breaking up on high notes, G sharp and C. Couldn't really hear it in the Anderton's video, but it's something that you probably have to know how to listen to, and you have to have it experienced with a real cap, which I haven't. So when you click on the speaker selection, this is it. Okay, so there aren't a million uh, caps right now. It doesn't look it's expandable as if it's expandable. It might be. They might give you more, but these are not IRs. They're not impulse responses, they're actually uh, something called dynamic speaker modeling, which means it reacts to everything you're giving it. Uh, it's not a snapshot of a cap, which again works totally fine uh, for, uh, for impulse response loaders and impulse response loaders really have changed the game. This is a different technology where if they want to give us more caps, they can't just go and uh, profile one and load it in and you can't do it yourself. We have to wait for them to actually expand the system. Now, is it really necessary? Or are these caps more than enough? That's for everyone else to decide. So let's see what we have. We have 110, 112, 112, probably blue bulldogs, 112 black DUX. That might be something that's hinting at a Fender Deluxe. Um, two verb, I don't know. Ace, AC, okay, that's hinting at a Vox cap, but you know, politely done, let's put it this this way. No idea what that is. That's an uh, upright thing. El Nico 50. Uh, we have a 410. We have one 410. Uh, how many 410s do you need, I think? We have four 412s. And that's something where probably some of the metal guys amongst you might say, ah, that's not enough. I want my angle. I want all this. Well, yes and no. My first reaction when I played with the 412s for a heavy sound, which we're going to get into, was, hmm. <laughs> but you have very good EQ in here and you have very good sound sculpting capabilities and I got to a pretty good sound I think it's all subjective so what we have here is failure to communicate no uh, so this apparently is a 412 hinting at green 25 watt speaker so those might be greenbacks here we have something British again with green okay and here we have something with lead, 80. And you have something with white, cream, so these might be cream backs. What we don't see is anything vintage 30 loaded. If you ask me, who gives a flying rat's ass? If it sounds good, it sounds good. That's what I say. Okay. Now I'll just change the speaker. <laughs> Let's, let's just do that one more time. We'll just pick something here. Get done. You can see the uh, mics can be panned. That's where it gets into stereo. Interesting. I want a little bit more room, and I want that in the middle. You could have room on one side, speakers on one on, on the other. So this is not reverb. This is actually. You can always control that on the aux itself. Let's just do one other speaker for shits and giggles, something like a tiny one. 
We know about Chinese stuff. I, I love how, what that room sounds like, but again, it's that one studio room that they have. Gotta say, it sounds incredibly alive. Very, very nice. Now, I'm gonna go back to, I don't know, this 112 here. I like 212s. Where's the 212? 210, yeah, 212. Let's do that. So, let's look at mics. You have two mics, which are uh, on a torpedo studio, where you have uh, left and right, two different caps. You could do the same cap, but mic it differently. So, that is a way to also do what can be done here. And you could mix and match. Get it both in the middle, turn the EQ off. So here we have a ribbon. If you look at the mic selection, you have a 57, 421, ribbon 121, ribbon 160, uh, 67, a 414, and going direct, which will probably sound uh, direct. So I want a 57, and I want a 121. That is a ribbon mic. That is a very, very classic way to mic amps. Now if I'm going to mute the ribbon, I only have the 57. Um, as for mic positioning, all I can do is put that off axis now. So I'm going to switch back and forth. It didn't hit the string. So, uh, I like off axis. It's not as bitey for a metal sound. What's a metal sound? We might want more bitey. Uh, if I roll it off uh, with a uh, high pass. Not so noticeable here, but if I mute this and go to the 121, check this out. That is all warm. If I did this correctly, I would do... You can hear it's very, very warm. I also like the off-axis there. But let's keep it... No, but if I wrote it off now... Okay, so if I mix the two... I have my bite. And so on, if I could play. Um, it's very cool to... If you have a guitar part that's not getting doubled, to spread them out a bit. It's important to note that this can only be done, you know, in the software, on the actual aux. You can save that, but you can't actually operate the box by itself. Um, let's pan that hardcore. Really, really cool sounds. Um, that's it for here. Each individual mic has an EQ option. So I turn the EQ on and I click on this and I have a, a graphic EQ or a... How many bands is that? 
Holy crap. Uh, so four band, uh, fully parametric EQ with high end low pass options. But I have to turn that on somehow. Here we go. What's it doing? I think this is kind of... Oh, wow. The software is a little bit slow right now. Like, whoa, is it slow? Look at this. It's doing stuff that I did like, you know, three minutes ago. This is probably still beta. You can't download that from the website. So I'm assuming that's going to be better. Okay, um, we're going to go to turn that stuff off because this is clearly not working yet. Wow. So let's go to graphic. And I can actually just boost. Very nicely picked frequencies, I gotta say. Oh, you can actually change the frequencies in touch mode. Yes, that is cool. So you can just pick your frequency here. Go to graphic, and there you go. You can very, very clearly sculpt any kind of sound you want. If a speaker is a little bit pointy, peaky, or whatever it wants to do, you want it warmer around, anything with this EQ is possible. Plus, that is possible with each mic and the room individually. So I made it just mid, mid crazy. Without. So let's leave that. I'm gonna bring in the ribbon again. this sound I gotta admit so um, maybe a little bit less in the mids a little bit less but I'll keep that so um, what did they have here nothing too much I'll keep I'll, I'll leave that off um, I'll bring back the room and again I could EQ my room as well I have to turn it on It has to be on. Here we go. A lot of stuff you can do. Now you can uh, roll off the low end on the uh, room. And you can dampen it. And they are visualizing that by putting a rug down. I don't know. Not sure exactly what that does. And then of course you can mic the rooms with different mics, which is very cool. Let's do that. That is very cool, having the room in stereo versus now that I like. So as for mics, you can't go back and forth. You have, you know, off axis on off axis. Uh, that's it's very straightforward. If we look at the master, that is where a lot of stuff happens. I can do an EQ on everything. If I don't want to EQ everything individually, I can do a master EQ. 
same settings, all that. We don't do that. And they have the 1176. Now we know that Universal Audio has the best plugins. You might not know that, but I'm a full believer on that nothing beats them, sorry. And the 1176 has been with me since 2001, I think, when the first UAD card came out. So uh, no question about that. That's the shit. So I turn that on, especially for cleans. I go to A21 here. Pushing that a bit. the sound. Ha, if I could only play that. Or you want your notes to ring longer? Keep that on. And then you have a delay, which looks simple, but can do quite a bit of stuff. What uh, The thing that I don't like is that it can't do... Uh, it can't do uh, beats per minute, which is... Or, or at least I haven't found out how. So, pan left, right, output, mix. Mix is fine. Output, loads. Dual delay. Ping pong. Awesome! Now, now, delay doesn't necessarily mean delay. Delay means everything you can do with the delay, which could be chorusing, flanging, flanging, all that stuff, because it's all done by moving the original signal against what you're playing. Uh, no, it, it, the delayed signal against what you're playing. Um, dual delay. Oh, those were all the ones we have. Let's say dual. We're going to see what kind of cool sounds they do when we go through some presets. And then there's the plate verb. I'm going to turn the delay off. Plate verb. That's just adding to everything an actual reverb. Why that? Why they didn't do the uh, uh, AKG one, the really brilliant spring reverb? I don't know. But hey, let's see what the plate can do. So the point is that with the aux, you pretty much have, have either practice-ready sounds on the main dial in the front, just dial it in and you have delay, reverb and everything you want, or you have record-ready sounds with everything you need. With effects, with reverb, with the sound, with the air, panned left and right, everything you heard in the intro track, by, uh, by example, for example, um, didn't have any post-production. -pro uh, no delays, no reverbs, anything. Everything you heard was... What was coming out of the damn thing the way that it was set up? And to illustrate that, I'm going to go to a couple of presets. To assign what's on the front switch, by the way, you go to this assign page. And there you have six sounds. And you go to whatever you want. Pick something from the factory presets. And click it. That's it. 
So we're gonna go back to the rig. Let's go to some factory presets to see what they dialed in there. You can see everything jumps around. That didn't always work yesterday when I recorded the track. The software, again, needs a little bit of fine tuning. Oh, you have to actually to open up the guitar too. gonna tweak things we're just gonna, gonna go through the presets so you can see what's happening one thing that I noticed were that was that the uh, um, presets that came loaded on the front panel were very, very good, but not at all for anything high gain. So if you want something high gain, you have to go through the presets, find your own, put them on the front panel. The six that came loaded with it had way too much treble in them. So they should at least give me one that doesn't bite my ears off. Now that's nice. Come on. I'm going to go to the small box, which I have on the BE channel. That's a comfortable lead, as it says. Yeah, I like how the room breathes. Breathes. Yeah, that's just too bitey. Because it's pristine clean. Back to the Morgan AC20. Oh, hell yeah! Green punch, what do we have here? We have a 412. Sounds dirty, let's make it even dirtier by giving it 50 watt and really pushing it. So what are they saying? Which notes are supposed to go F sharp, G sharp, and C? Okay. I don't, I don't hear it, but uh, let's go do a different guitar. Because we're slowly moving into more high gain territory. <laughs> This is, that's actually good, yeah. see not it the woman tone all dull but hey that's that's a Eighties heaven, right there. Um, so let me show you a couple of crazy, way more out there sounds. 
That's direct. to play Dr. Feelgood. Uh, but where's that crazy cool sound? Midhong is what I used for the solo sound uh, here. That's what I'm trying to show you. There's some crazy shit you can do. This is one of the sounds I actually used in the track and I thought it's pretty damn brilliant. That's pretty, pretty bitey. That's with Direct who wants that. So sad but true. Obviously, we're now looking at metally sounds. So we get it. We get to that. Let me switch to uh, the Dirty Shirley. A little bit more gain already. Heft. So if I wanted to tweak that, I'm going to roll off the low end here. I'm going to go actually off axis. I'm going to change that to a 57. I'm going to get that up a bit, room down a bit. Probably turn on the 1176. So, okay, we're getting into the metal thing, so let's actually get into the metal thing. We are now on the Rev Generator 100P, which is, it doesn't get more metal than that. With a guitar that probably do also doesn't get an awful lot more metal than that. We're gonna go to something that I prepared, which is called Metal One. Isn't that clever? <laughs>
different sound. at all there. Yeah, you only have four, um, four twelves, but I think you can dial in some really, really cool sounds, whether you want a lot of bottom end or you want a lot of bite. It, it's all there with the EQ possibilities. Uh, I think this is, with its limited speaker selection and the absence of V30s, still possible to dial in some really killer sounds. Now, are you able to upload uh, your import responses from Rev, Fortin, uh, Engel, uh, Dietzel and all the, you know, crazy metal caps that for brand recognition you want? No, you can't. Um, but I think you can still get very, very usable results. Okay? Um, which leaves us to just take a look at Torpedo, Universal Audio, Two Notes, Universal Audio, Torpedo, Ox. What is right for you? So I actually made a Comparison list, which uh, I'm gonna put right there. Uh, it's long, and that's what she said. No, no, she never actually does that. Um, and I think two notes as well as Universal Audio are on top of their game, and I really couldn't tell you what I would prefer. Let me see if I could. In a studio, with its optical out, and a relatively straightforward interface and not a lot of confusion and also the possibility of quickly turning on a delay and actually sculpting your sound more record ready. I love the Ox and I love its breathiness. Okay, with the room and its dynamic modeling, I love that. On the other hand, you can't reamp with it and uh, well, let's, let's go through the list. So, IR loader, very clearly expandability through the La Boutique shop, uh, the Torpedo, can load impulse responses from many, many different vendors, two notes uh, uh, themselves. With the, the aux, you get what's in the box. They might expand the speaker selection, but only they do. Okay, plus or minus, I don't know. I don't, is that a pro or is it a con? Now, the dynam dynamic speaker modeling, only the aux does. And that might mean that you get more of the reactiveness of the speaker. Do you, do you not? I don't know. You got to play it and experience it. It does feel incredibly lively. It, it sounds to me like I actually mic'd a speaker in a room, which of course the torpedoes do too. So I don't know what I'm saying. Um, reactive load, they all have. That's important in that price range. Absolutely. Now, for me, the torpedoes not being attenuators really bugs me. Because that is something that I, I would like. I would like to be able on stage to pump up my 100 watt amp, but actually, you know, give the signal through my torpedo live to the front of house, but then dial down the amp. Uh, at Gitcon, we wanted to dial down the speakers in the rooms, which we couldn't do. We had to put torpedo captors in between the... But it was... I think that is something that they should be able to do. Now, the reload from torpedo can do that. Um, but it doesn't do the speaker simulation. For that, you need the software. So they either have one thing or another. The Ox does both. It definitely has the Nase von, uh, as we say in German. It has its nose ahead. It's it's ahead in the in the uh, attenuation department. No question about that. Stereo. While the Torpedo Live cannot do it, it's mono. Uh, the Ox does stereo with its effects and mics left and right it doesn't do stereo caps so it's very important to understand you do not feed it stereo signals you can't have a stereo delay in your amp and feed it into the aux 
whereas the Torpedo Studio can handle stereo signals. And be careful, it can't handle two amps. It can handle one amp and a line input. So you have, if you have two amps, one can be fed into the Torpedo Studio directly, take the other amp through a load box like the Torpedo Captor and feed it into the line input and then you actually have two amps with two different caps or the same caps, panned hard left and right. So the Torpedo Studio allows you to do stereo amps with an additional box um, or feed it line signals from uh, delay or reverb or whatever. So uh, that the aux cannot do. Talking about that, and that's further down, line in. Uh, the live and the studio from two nodes both have line in, meaning you can feed it a preamp. You can feed it a just an overdrive pedal. You can feed it any kind of pedal into the line in, and the torpedo will simulate the power amp with different tubes and its tube distortion. Um, and so you can run it with more than just a full amp, whereas the aux cannot. The only input that the aux has is speaker input. Okay, that's kind of sad. Which also means you can't use the aux for reamping. So if you just go out of, someone gives you signals recorded out of the effect send or line out from an amp, it was recorded in bumfuck who knows where, and you take those signals and want to run them through your speaker simulation. You can't, or through your aux, because it doesn't have a line input. That also said, so it's not made for reamping. Um or for re-speakering. Uh, MIDI. Aux doesn't have MIDI, which technically, if you took it live, which it's not made, made for that with its shape, um, you can't switch on the stage with a MIDI board. You'd have to run over to it and go click, which it also has to load the sound, which takes a bit. Uh, so no MIDI, which also means in a studio sitting over there, I have to either run the software and switch there, or actually run over to it. So MIDI, even for a studio, would be a nice thing to have. So no MIDI on the aux, but on the live and the torpedo. Um, maximum wattage on the live is uh, 100 watts. The aux and the torpedo studio both take 150. Power amp emulation, I already said that. The aux doesn't, the other two have. Line in, nope. Uh, Ox doesn't have that. Headphone out, all three have. Spitif out, all can go digital. That is great. Um, optical out, the Ox has it. The uh, live, and I don't know if the studio has it. I got to check. Uh, it's, it's in the list there. Okay, I got to check that. Um, balanced out. They all have balanced out, but I think for a studio tool, which the Ox clearly is, not having XLR out, not cool. The price range that it's in is clearly showing universal audio is tailored towards studios because, you know, all the studio gear just costs more money. And so with 1300 bucks, it's clearly aimed at, you know, people that spend that kind of money, which is studio guys. But not having XL out, yes, it's balanced, but still, you can't use a normal mic cable. You have to have a mic to and so. It should have XLR out. I'm sorry, it should. Uh, the live doesn't. It only has one output, but it's balanced. The studio has two XLR outs. XLR ins, only the studio has because the aux doesn't have a line input. And on the studio, you can go balanced XLR in if you want to. But they're combi things. You can also go in with a tip ring sleeve or just a normal tip ring thing. Uh, USB, all of them have. The torpedoes can be controlled with their software, which, talking about the software, I love the AUX software because it looks very, very classic. It's, it's hiding that whole high-tech thing, and it's like, hey, here's an old room, and everything is made very hands-on looking, whereas the torpedo software is very techy looking. Uh, so the feel in your head is a little bit different. Uh, on the other hand, the torpedo now has an arcade mode, which, as it sounds, looks a little bit toyish with a little bit of blocks, but that arcade mode is more like the uh, Arc software. Much more reduced, straightforward. So, 
um, Wi-Fi, only the aux has. iPad software, only the aux has. A USB, they all have. Dual caps, only the uh, well, Torpedo Wall of Sound software can do or the Torpedo Studio. Dual caps, pan them left and right. And that actually allows you to do uh, the dual miking that you could do on aux if you do, you know, to use the same cap twice but different mics. Uh, dual caps in stereo that, again, the studio can do. Uh, I just talked about that. The cone cry thing by you know, pushing it. Ox can do, the others can't. Room sims. Are we calling this a reverb or a room simulation? Well, the ox has that one room that the speakers are in. That That's the sound. There's no other room. But then you have reverb. Now, on the torpedo, they're calling it a room sim. Because you can put that cap in a room, but what it is is just giving it a different reverb. It's a high-end reverb and it's great. Whether or not that's the same, I don't know. So the Ox has a room and an actual plate reverb. The Torpedo has eight different room reverbs that the cap is in. Uh, results are probably very similar. Uh, dedicated reverb, only the Ox has. Delay, only the Ox has. EQ, both have. Uh, compression, same thing. Uh, on the other hand, the interface and the 1176, just by its notoriety, is a nice addition because you're actually working with, oh my god, it's 1176. What comp the torpedo has, I don't know, but it's a good one as well. They know what they're doing. So, uh, the Exciter, only the torpedoes have. Fully variable mics, only the torpedoes have. You can move it around the room, you can even turn the cab around and mic it from the back. The Ox does not have that. You can put the mic on or off axis, that is it. Uh, technically, it could sound as if there's more of the room by moving the mic back, but actually it's the moving the, the room reverb up, the room mic up. Uh, probably the same thing. Uh, dual mics, as I said, Ox has Torpedo Studio with a workaround you can do. Bass caps, Ox is for guitar. Torpedo has uh, IRs of bass caps, tons of them. So, what else? Rack mountable, le rack mountable. The aux is clearly made for the bedroom, living room player. Put it on top of your amp, use headphones or record with it at home, you know, or attenuate in the bedroom or living room um, and use it in the studio. Its shape and size is not, is clearly not made for taking it live. Can you rack mount that yourself? Totally. Would you want to use it live? You can, but you have to make sure that it's, you know, somehow secure and it doesn't have MIDI. Uh, it doesn't have XLR out. So, actually, the Torpedo Studio, uh, the Torpedo Live doesn't have either. Okay. So, um, but the Ox is clearly studio and at home, whereas the rack mountability and all the features of the Torpedoes are for live use. Okay, uh, Universal Audio would have to actually get you rack mounting ears for the for the aux. I don't even know if that's... Yeah, they probably could do that. Let me see. Well, there's actually no screws or threads on the sides, which means they probably haven't planned on that. They're a studio company. They make studio gear. So see the aux as a studio thing. Live use, clearly the other two have the upper hand. La, 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 la. Fits on amp. Well, the other two, if you want to actually live put them or no, live, yeah, well, if you want to put them on an amp, you have to put the rack on an amp. They're not made for that. The aux fits on an amp beautifully. Okay, so that upper hand there. Uh, programmable on the device. If you don't have the app on your on your iPad or you don't have your computer, you can't actually do anything on the aux other than switch between the six presets. Whereas on the uh, torpedoes. If you, uh, on the studio, you have a big display and you can do everything you want there. On the live, you have a smaller display, but it's, it, the user interface is very well designed and you get to what you want very quickly. So yes, you can actually operate them without anything. Um, good for live travel. Torpedoes, yes. Ox, not so much. Pricing. Ox, 1300, right in between the 900 of the live and the 1600 of the Torpedo Studio. Now, sound-wise, I would say 
I love my Torpedo Studio, and I love the guys from Two Notes. I love the Ox, and I love the guys from Universal Audio. So my loyalties are really divided. I would possibly go to the studio if I want the heavier stuff, because those cabs that do the very modern heavy sounds um, are loaded in there. And uh, I have to go to the studio if I want to run anything other than a tube amp or if I want stereo actual ping pong from my Strymon timeline. All that, I have to use the studio for it. So I can't live without my Torpedo Studio. I do love the liveliness and the playfulness of the Ox. Um, personally, I think the Ox should be $9.99. I think $12.99 is a little bit pricey. Not that it's not worth it, but for them as a strategy, I think it would be cleverer to put it under a thousand because the average guitar player not being able to take this thing live and switch it with MIDI and stuff, but really just using it at home for recording probably isn't going to drop 1300 bucks. Now a studio drops the 1600 on the Torpedo Studio without a problem. They will probably drop the 1300 for the Ox without a problem. Which one makes sense? Neither is better than the other. They're clearly different. They're clearly meant for a different target audience. Uh, I have a feeling that a lot more classic and vintage players will go for the Ox. Looking at the presets, not a single preset says modern gent. The, the, the gent. Not a single preset says uh, children of super evil bottom Swedish grindcore sound. But they say woman tone. You know, they're clearly gunning for the older, more vintage sounds, whereas the torpedo, yes, they have caps that can cover all of that, but I think their marketing strategy is modern player, whereas the Ox is pro probably more classic player, even though both can cover both. That's really also my two cents, because I can't tell you right now which one I like more. I really love them both. And I would probably use both depending on what, actually what amp I use and what sound I'm going for. Or whether I want to fiddle with effects later on, or whether I want something quickly, bam, pff, done, go. Very tough, very tough decision. Now I think the Ox could have had XLR. I think there's a couple of things that I would have done. Torpedo Studio is fully featured. Torpedo Live, great for live. You have all the information now. Can you check these out at a store? Compare them? Tough. With headphones at a store, is that the same thing? Not my problem. That's your problem. So there you go. The Ox Universal Audio. Tomorrow I'm going to NAMM, after that, editing all the footage, then going on vacation, then you'll see me for the next video, so I'm going to shoot that in more than four weeks from now. I love you guys. Links below, animals at the end, Patreon as always, if you love me, and bye-bye.